Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bhartia, and welcome to TFR Insight, a show where we deep dive into open source and emerging technologies. And today we have with us, once again, Lin Sun, Director of Open Source at Solo.io. Lin, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks so much for having me. It's an honor to be back. It's great to have you here, uh, but this time you are in a totally different capacity than we talked last time. Now you are at Solo, now you are heading open source. So talk a bit about, we have covered Solo uh, earlier. We have uh, talked to her, edit a lot, but let's just quickly for the benefit of our audience, tell me a bit about Solo and of course, uh, what uh, focus you will have at the company as the director of open source, because Solo is uh, mostly all about open source either way. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Solo is a fairly new startup, I would say, probably three years into the journey. What really attracted me to come to Solo is um, I'm always impressed with Solo as a company, as how fast they innovate and they build their interesting solutions on top of open source projects like Istio and Envoy. Um, I would say Solo is really in the space of um, connecting services and API gateways uh, to help our user to transition from uh, monolithic to microservices. Now let's talk about uh, IstioCon, which I think was organized a couple of weeks ago. We were actually planning to have an interview before IstioCon, but some logistics did not work out. We live in a crazy world. Uh, so let's talk about what what were the key takeaways from that uh, event. Yeah, I would say it's a hugely successful event. Uh, I'm so honored to be like the uh, conference program co-chair. Um, so we were able to select a really, really interesting topic from a wide a range of users. So we have about 3,000 users joining us from almost all the continents uh, of the world. And uh, it was just so interesting to see so much excitement around Istio, so much excitement around service mesh in general at the conference. My key takeaway of the conference, I would say, it's fairly clear to me, uh, Istio is the dominant service mesh. I really think Istio is becoming like the Kubernetes for container orchestration system, and Istio is becoming the de facto standard for service mesh. So that's uh, key takeaway number one. Uh, key takeaway number two is Istio and Kubernetes are actually coming together. It's really interesting to hear um, the leaders from the community talk about how Istio is adopting some of the Kubernetes networking APIs, such as gateway class and all that. So and also the multi-cluster service API from Kubernetes. So I think Istio and Kubernetes moving together is really going to solidify Istio's position as a leader uh, in the service mesh space. Um, the third takeaway, I would say uh, from our customer uh, is, you know, customers are super excited about the innovative work the community have done in the past year in 2020 around Istio. Customer gives us lots of thumbs up about the simplified uh, control plane component where Istio it consolidated all of our control plane components into one Istio daemon and customer was super supportive and uh, gave us like drastic simplification. That's the feedback I hear a lot about the control plane simplification because it really helped them to run and operate uh, Istio service mesh. Um, I've also heard a lot of positive feedback around the, the Istio community really listen to customers' feedback, and we added a Helm 3 support back because Helm was so popular as an installation to install uh, Istio. So that was very positive as well. Um, the first key takeaway, I would say, you know, the community is uh, really headed towards making Istio 
boring. Um, you know, the service mesh space is never anything close to boring, but the community are really looking at making Istio, at least the core API of Istio to be very boring. And if you if users wants to build interesting things on top of Istio, we're going to provide extensibility like Envoy and Kubernetes has done to allow them to extend Istio using like web assemblies. During the conference, did you uh, hear about any exciting use cases or Istio's inroads into new spaces, for example, edge computing? or uh, let's say 5G networking, uh, service mesh is going to play a very, you know, kind of important role there as well. Yeah, so we did actually have a dedicated talk uh, in the day one of the conference, talk about uh, adopting Istio service mesh for 5G, right? So um, that was a really interesting talk because it really shared with the community about you know, how they are leveraging Istio for 5G of their control plane. And they were happy with the results of running Istio, uh, running their 5G control plane on top of Istio. And also share us with some of the challenges when they were running uh, Istio's data plane on their data plane because of the high requirement of uh, uh, latency, you know, with around with 5G. So I I got the feeling the team, um, I think it was from Verizon, they didn't think the, the data plane side was super ready for them to adopt, but their control plane was able to run it on top of Istio and they were very happy with that. Uh, also, security is also becoming a very serious, not serious, but uh, a topic which is no longer an afterthought, especially when we talk about edge or 5G. And, you know, so any discussion around that as well uh, in terms of STO uh, security, 5G edge? Yeah, there's a lot of security talk actually around the conference, around how people leveraging STO to do like mutual TLS, how people leveraging Istio to plug in their external authorization system, how people leveraging Istio to do like a uh, role-based um, service configuration. So there's a lot of uh, those part, but I think the edge definitely have a little bit more detailed requirements, like web application firewall, you know, have specific requirement that's more strict on the edge. Um, I just don't recall there are specific one around Edge and 5G together. Let's talk about now S2 itself. Uh, if you look at S2 in the last, you know, couple of months, um, you did allude to, you know, the use cases, how in the community is using it, but uh, can you just talk about the evolution as, as you also said, it's working closely with Kubernetes and other cloud technology. So just talk about the, the evolution of Istio that you have seen uh, from the outside as well as part of the community itself. Yeah, so I, I feel like the key focus of the Istio community is really going down this the core function of Istio, because we are a four-year project now, we really want it to be stable. We really want to be able to label our functionalities with the reasonable stage status, I would say. If you look at Kubernetes, right? They have certain features they mark as alpha, beta, stable. And when they introduce a new feature, they always gone through from experimental to alpha to beta and having that gradual promotion phase. And we're seeing the same trend with Istio too, because we have a lot of customers running Istio in production and using the core functions of Istio. So we want to make sure those customers are going to be continue happy, uh, whether they are running Istio um, or whether they are upgrading to newer version of Istio. We want to make sure they can operate Istio continually, successfully, after the day one installation. So a lot of focus on the project is going to be make sure the core of the Istio is stable. But in the meanwhile, we know the comp some companies want to build innovations on top of Istio. This is where the extensibility is, is getting really important for Istio because, you know, it's not up to the 
it's your project to define everything everyone wants to do, but it's up to really important to have the Istio project define the extensibility model. So companies like my company Solo could build interesting things, uh, whether it's around the edge or whether it's around the data plane to satisfy specific customer requirement. One thing we notice is like different customers have different requirements. It's really hard to satisfy them all. And it's really hard to build all those requirements into the core of Istio because everyone has their own flavor and, uh, you know, what they wanted differently. What kind of roadmap is there for Istio? First of all, it's open source projects. So everything is out there for anybody to go and see, but still from your perspective. Uh, yeah, from my perspective, uh, certainly, you know, um, the, the feature stage uh, I talk about, that's one of the key things we're going to, you know, roll out as far as like stability of the project and the extensibility is the second important thing. Make sure not only the uh, the data plane is extensible, looking at uh, web assembly, but even look at some of the control plane extensibility to allow people to plug in different things. For example, OPA, or external authorization system to allow people to customize um, certain functions or maybe even on Istio control plane. I think those are super important. Third priority, I think, is also how does our user continue to onboard in Istio without any configuration changes of their application? That's really important for the project so that we can do like zero uh, configuration and to help user onboarding into Istio, uh, those are super important. Fourth, um, I think we're looking at some of the advanced scenario, like how can we lazy initiating the clusters and Envoy configuration, right? If you have a lot of services, you may not want every single Envoy is programmed and ready to go. You may only want to, you know, activate the configuration when there's actually requests hitting on the service. So these are some of the advanced scenario, you know, we're tackling for certain customers, the like Knative who has really high requirements, on, you know, the number of services they can run, but also on the latency of um, of the request flow. Is there anything else you want to talk about or should we wrap this up? Yeah, I think this is good. The only thing I would want to mention is uh, we're having solo Kong, um, uh, March 23rd to 25th. If anybody wants to be interested in learning more around um, solo and service mesh, uh, they can join us for free. Lynn, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about... Uh the event, uh, the evolution of uh, Istio, and also uh, the event that is coming up for Solo. And we we'll all look forward to attending the event. So once again, thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Swapley. I appreciate it.